This is JC from the Real and Simulated Worlds blog. I'm playing the Black Gold Blitz scenario from the Command Live series for a uh, command. Command, or also known as uh, the long title, it is Command Modern Air and Naval Operations. It is the most realistic and the most thorough representation of naval and air warfare that you can think of. This uh, particular scenario is about a uh, Air warfare, the navies of both sides are kind of in safe port because they were, you know, they're worth a lot of money, or I believe, and they were not worth to be put at risk for this particular scenario. I am playing the blue side, which is Saudi Arabia, and the computer is handling the right side, the red side, which is Iran. In this war, both sides try to inflict damage to uh, oil infrastructure. You can see a lot of my units, my units, my uh, facilities over there are uh, highlighted in, 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 in these uh, squares. And uh, of course, we have a, a series of airplanes and units that and, uh, also surface to air uh, missiles. And we have to inflict damage to the enemy. Uh, I'm just one hour into this game and uh, I suffered quite a lot. I lost a lot of facilities and uh, my score right now it is in the minus 200s or something like that because a lot of Iranian rockets have hit our facilities. Such a pity. However, very interestingly, I have engaged my air force in a series of uh, uh, dogfights against uh, the Iranian air force, uh, in particular near our coast and uh, we kind of demolished 14 Su-24s uh, they're shown in this window right here pretty awesome but still I need to inflict damage into these Iranian facilities and uh, what I want to do right now it is in particular to uh, inflict to destroy or strike these facilities in the Kark Island and all these power plants, which are I'm have a lighting and moving my cursor over this one, and this oil refining facility apparently, and that's what I'm up to do. And you may have already read a blog that I posted a while back. I'm gonna put put a link into the video description where I was uh, <laughs> whining a bit about air superiority because. Gosh, this is this is such a good scenario to show the importance of air superiority, and it's being hard and it's going to be very challenging. Uh, the, the Iranian air force. I don't want to digress too much because this is going to be probably I uh, I have like two or three videos to to make about this, but I just don't want to anticipate myself. But uh, very very briefly, uh, all contrary to what the briefing says. Uh, the Iranian Air Force is not to be messed with, uh, it's not a walkover. They're taking an approach that is really very, very interesting. There, do you see this? Um, oh my god, hold on a second. This, um, I really suck at zooming in. All these uh, yellow icons over there, these are uh, fighters, and uh, they do spend a lot of time going back and forth, kind of patrolling. And every time I approach the Iranian coast using my, my fighters or bombers or whatever, they will just rain down. And in addition to that, to add uh, insult to injury, there is a lot of radar facilities and uh, SAM facilities that, oh my god, they're tough to deal with because uh, you don't only not only have to deal with the fighters, but you also have to deal with the SAMs. So very very interesting a scenario. And again, I don't want to digress and uh, put myself off topic because this uh, uh, particular video is going to be about something completely off the mill, and uh, it's not going to be a, a debrief or nothing of that of that sort. So let's go into this and what brings me to this video, what uh, moved me to make this video. As I mentioned before, this um, war game or simulation is the most complete and thorough representation of air and naval warfare uh, right now that's available, you know, to the uh, 
off the shelf or to, to the plain uh, civilian market, uh, it is it is a lifetime of learning. There is literally thousands of weapon systems and platforms, and it is really takes a long time to learn all about it. And when it comes to tactics, I was reminded of a very important thing that I actually forgot, but it was not un until um, I started rereading uh, this very, very nice book, which by the way, let me transition to that window over there. Aha, sorry for the blip. Uh, I was talking about this uh, book, which is a classic, Flick Tactics and Coastal Combat. And by the way, heads up, there is a third edition out already. I got mine here in my desk and uh, I'm rereading things from cover to cover as I did before, because this book is really, really, really something that all serious players of uh, uh, command need to need to read or at least to consult time by time. So uh, the third edition is out and uh, in particular I recall this passage. Right now I have the copy right here and let me open my my copy right here in page uh, 23. Uh, the, the author is dealing with some um, series of uh, cornerstones called that uh, build what a good uh, naval officer has to have as skills and uh, there is this passage or this is section that says to know tactics no technology which is the title of this uh, blog post and uh, i think that's a very 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 important uh, type of uh, consideration and uh, i just wanted to elaborate a little bit on that and make some comments about how to how to move with this uh, uh, particular concept now back into the game and taking a look at the uh, magazines of the king abdulaziz air base you will see this fantastic collection of different weapons that we have available uh, sensors and uh, also countermeasures, pots and whatever, and a lot of different ordinances that they are used into different ways. And my question was when I when I opened this was, oh my God, I really need to practice more uh, in the use of all these uh, different weapons because many of them I haven't used it like the storm shadow missile i never never launched one of those and that could be something that it could be great for every time you release a scenario or something like that it is to create a, a mock scenario or a companion scenario where you get the player or the customer to play around with these uh, weapons in a learning fashion without too much fuss and uh, make it somewhere in training range or something. Uh, that could be really very, very, very good to, to have around. Uh, in this particular case, well, I'm too faded and too short on time. You can use the editor yourself and go and make these missions and try different platforms and whatnot. But uh, I don't know. It's not whining, but it could be cool to have not a tutorial but at least to get training with these uh, uh, particular weapons platforms uh, this is coming from a player that again is not a pro probably you know a bit fuzzy in his knowledge and and what not where is this coming from well it comes from the logic approach that everybody takes when you learn something in the old saying how to eat an elephant you have to eat it one bite at a time. But in particular, I wanted to bring to your attention that uh, there is a complete theory and, you know, a whole branch in education about how uh, cognitive development happens. And in particular, this guy was one of the pioneers of uh, PI Jet. And uh, he basically said that 
or formulated the theory of how the little kids um, start their uh, cognitive development and how they use simple tasks to form high level concepts of things. And if you think about it, you have a very similar situation here. You have high level knowledge, tactics, operations, and then you have low level knowledge, which is how to fire a rifle or how to launch a missile or what is the effect that that's uh, thing uh, those uh, actions do have and how those actions extend in the big context of things so uh, no surprises here but I think that this applies really really very nicely and I am feeling very tempted to start a, uh, a series of posts uh, to learn tactics tactics from the ground up using uh, this particular approach if you will so stay tuned, something may be coming uh, for other type of games too. So let's get started. I am here at King Abdulaziz Air Base and I'm inspecting all the aircraft that they have available. And I want to use these Storm Shadow missiles for which I have uh, two. So I'm going to launch this aircraft. I'm going to start the game. This guy is going to take a while to take off. And this is just a very simple thing. I just want to learn how to use it. And I'm going to just increase the time compression. And I'm going to wait until this guy takes off. Still there is some time before it does that. So apparently this is a fire and forget missile. It's a cruise missile. And I'm going to use it against let's say one of these power plants over there i'm going to launch one missile and then i'm going to launch launch another missile against this other one and see what happens so while we wait i'm going to just uh uh just pause the, the the filming and we'll be back in a second so welcome back. I have my tornado, tornado AIDS already launched. It is climbing right now. And I'm going to be using manual targeting against this oil refining facility. We use engage target manual. I'll be using this. I'm going to be giving it one storm shadow and let's see what happens of course i'm assuming that you're familiar with how to do this this uh weapon i do believe it can be used to in uh program admissions there it goes missile away it has quite an spiffy range to be honest I think the guidance is autonomous. If there is any type of doubt, you can always open the window that describes the weapon to learn more about the guidance and uh, everything. So we have some contacts while this happens. So it can be launched with pre-briefed targets against pre-briefed targets and it has an INS with a GPS navigation device. So that's it. It's really fire and forget. So let's use another one. Let's use another of these babies against this facility here. I'm gonna adjudicate, adjudicate, assign one missile more. There we go. And as soon as the missiles are launched, this guy goes back. I am tempted when the time comes. I don't want to explore too much these weapons capabilities and ruin the scenario like spoiling it for myself. Like knowing what's gonna happen or what's gonna happen next or what's likely to happen next, but most of the 
AI or the scenarios that I have played with uh, the command engine, the the um, the AI is rarely prescripted for the bigger things, so it's all responsive of what you do. I hope uh, that you don't see this as a cheat or something like that. I'm trying to explore. I just wanted to see the capabilities of, of this uh, missile and so far it's looking very 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 good this is the first time that I use this type of missile and it can cross the gulf pretty much with ease and my aircraft is safe if let's zoom out and take a look at the other fighters they didn't even notice anything so that is pretty cool and hopefully we're going to get some impacts over there and uh, well these are the good news if the missiles do impact they reach their target we're gonna be having a ball the tornado is coming back returning to base and uh, well right now is everything is time compression so I don't like to run it at a very high speed because if I increase the compression it's gonna be like uh, three times more so I'm gonna just uh, I'll pause the filming or the capturing and uh, and get back to you in the meantime in King Abdulaziz Air Base, we have some uh, F 15S's returning to base from their uh, combat air patrol mission. So stay tuned. I want to capture these uh, missile impacts and make some parting comments. So, welcome back. We're very close to impact. We have this target right here, power plant and the oil refining facility let's see if we get good hits there it goes target destroyed and the second one hopefully is going to do the same so in conclusion it's very important to know the weapon platform to build good tactics i see that this is kind of a simple weapon in terms of this very very convenient you don't put your aircraft at risk and you just fire and forget here comes the second one boom there it goes done it's very very useful uh, and i feel like now knowing this i can strike back to the iranians with uh, these storm shadow missiles and make good killing those are the good news the bad news is that i have a very limited supply of these missiles it's very very low and it takes like two hours to reload them and this scenario goes for uh, like 24 hours there are 23 hours to go still and uh, so it's going to be challenging to actually coordinate and make sure that there is always a good availability of this I don't know if to do all the reloading in bulk or just uh, wait until on the meantime it's going to be a question of uh, trying to achieve their superiority against by suppressing all these uh, uh, SAM defenses that there are over there particularly these ones uh, near the Kark Island and uh, these uh, radar systems look very very suspicious every time that they approach them some missiles get launched from somewhere so it's likely an, an integrated air defense system but hopefully and also this is something that can be learned in in the book that i just uh, mentioned air defenses have flanks and have holes 
so we will need to identify them and I kind of know what it can be done regarding that now the battle against the aircraft that would be nice to have but I still have to figure it out and I believe that at this point we still have some you see we have like all our um, aircraft still coming from the from the this air base that I mentioned in my previous blog post the the King Fav air base they are still in transit you see we have a 1215 uh, F-15 Eagles we have eight uh, Euro fighters coming inbound and it's gonna take some time to reload them uh, they have a good loadout right there uh, probably one could just air refuel them and vector them into uh, some cap mission but uh, I do believe I, I firmly believe that this particular deployment of the aircraft which is clever as hell I never seen something like this in in any other scenario this uh, type of uh, you know wait there and get vector uh, on demand uh, to my plan would be my need reaction could be just to lure them into a big battle by sending a very small contingent and then walk them with a bigger element but i don't know uh, m many many times i fear that i'm going to lose some aircraft and uh, those for those i really uh i pay a very high price so again i hope that uh uh, you like this video please subscribe like it or not whatever put some comments and uh, i will see you around the unfriendly skies and seas